We're going to say good morning and praise the Lord to everyone. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord again. Praise the Lord. First, giving honor to my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and to our pastor, District Elder Charles Pollock, yes. and to Mr. Balk Knight, who's in the audience this morning. We just praise and thank God for allowing us to be back before you on this morning, hearing to, or, or, or giving to you what thus said the Lord, amen, in the lesson this week, talking about focus on following, amen. Yes. Before we go any further into the uh, Sunday school lesson, what we're going to do is we're going to sing our opening hymn, Love Lifted Me. After that, we're going to go to the uh, Lord in the wor in a word of prayer. And then after that, we'll go further into the lesson. Amen? Amen. Amen. I will sink in deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore, very deeply stained within, sinking to rise no more. But the master of the seas heard my despairing cry. From the waters lifted me, now safe am I. Love lifted me, love lifted me. When nothing else could help, love lifted me. Love lifted me, love lifted me, when nothing else could help, love lifted me. Every, everyone would please let's bow our heads in a word of prayer. Most wonderful and gracious Heavenly Father, once again we come to you, dear God, as humbly as we know how, thanking and praising you, dear God, just for another day, Father. For another opportunity, dear God, to say what thus said the Lord, Father, to your people, dear Father. Someone might be encouraged, dear God, by the word that we speak on this morning, dear God, by what it is that the pastor is going to bring forth on this day, Father. We just praise you and we thank you, dear God, for your grace and your mercy and your love, Father, how you continue to keep us, dear God, even though all the things in the world, Father, are just coming, crumbling down around us, dear God. You've just been so faithful. You've been so good, dear God. You promised, dear God, that you would never leave nor forsake us, dear Father. And we just thank and we praise you, dear God, for that, dear Father. On this morning, we just ask you, dear God, to allow, Father, your word, Father, what it is that you put in us, Father, just to come forth and us take a back seat, dear God, so that what people see is the Jesus in us, dear God, on this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Most wonderful uh, lesson that we have on this uh, morning, talking about focusing, amen, on following. This is lesson five, um, July the 5th of 2020. We must say a happy belated or day after birthday to our first lady, uh, Sister Cheryl Lynn Paula. I think she turned like 44 yesterday, wasn't it? 55? What? I got it. I was 11. Oh, thank you, Jesus, for 55, amen. We just praise and thank God for allowing her to see another wonderful blessed birthday amen, amen. and uh you got to figure saints uh, uh the the years is, is is fastly fastly passing by first sunday in july amen um and 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 the uh lesson this week is focus on following the focus thought is no matter the distraction we must choose to focus on following the lord amen, amen. the focus verse is second kings two and two and it's encompassed in the lesson text, which is 2 Kings 2, 1 through 4, and 2 Kings 2, 11 through 15. So what I'll do is I'll read the lesson text, and then after that, we'll go further into the lesson. Amen? Amen. And it came to pass when the Lord would take up Elijah into heaven by a whirlwind, that Elijah went with Elisha from Gilgal. And Elijah said unto Elisha, tarry here, I pray thee, for the Lord hath sent me to Bethel. And Elisha said unto him, As the Lord liveth, liveth, and as thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. So they went down to Bethel. And the sons of the prophets that were at Bethel came forth to Elisha and said unto him, Knowest thou that the Lord will take away thy master from thy head today? And he said, Yea, I know it. Hold ye your peace. And Elijah said unto him, Elisha, tarry here, I pray thee, for the Lord hath sent me to Jericho. And he said, as the Lord liveth, and as the and as thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. So they came to Jericho. And it came to pass, as they still went on and talked 
that behold, there appeared a chariot of fire and horses of fire and parted them both asunder. And Elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven. And Elisha saw it and he cried, My father, my father, the chariot of Israel and the horsemen thereof. And he saw him no more. And he took hold of his own clothes and rent them in two pieces. He took up also the man of Elijah that fell from him and went back and stood by the bank of Jordan. And he took the mantle of Elijah that fell from him and smote the waters and said, Where is the Lord God of Elijah? Yeah. And when he also had smitten the water, waters, they parted hither and thither, and Elijah, Elisha went over. And when the sons of the prophets which were to view at Jericho saw him, they said, The spirit of Elijah doth rest on Elisha. And they came to meet him and bowed themselves to the ground before him. May the Lord add a blessing to his already blessed word. And I tell you, the, the wonderful thing about this uh, lesson, saints, is that it gives you a little something, even talking about distracted driving here and contemplating the topic at the very beginning of the lesson. And it tells us how many accidents are actually caused because we're not actually focused on what it is that we're to do. Amen. Whenever you're in the car, it's not time to party. It's not time to chastise. It's not time to listen to the radio. It's not time to do any of those things. It's to go from point A to point B and to get there safely. Amen. And the more that we focus on what it is that we need to do, amen, and, you know, we, we're going to cut the number of accidents that we're in or even that we're a cause of. Much the same with the word of God. If we are focusing on Jesus, if we're focusing on the word of God, we're not going to have as many opportunities, amen, to stray off the path that God has us. All right. What do we need to do to, as Pastor said so many times, walk that plumb line? How are we going to be able to get from here to there? We've got to keep our eyes on Jesus. We've got to keep our eyes on that prize that we're, that we're seeking. We're not seeking uh, uh, this world. We're seeking a world to come, amen? We're seeking a land. We're seeking a rest in a world to come so that we might be able to be at peace, amen? Because that's not something that we're going to get here on this here earth. You know, we've got to be obedient and we've got to be able to, to, to issue some of the things of the world in order to keep our focus, to keep our focus. And I'm not talking about with your natural eye. You will become distracted if you if you only depending on your natural eye. Amen? Amen. We've got to be able to keep our eyes on Jesus and let him through our faith walk. And that's why it's called a faith walk. Yeah. So that we might be able to find what it is that God would have us to do and who he would have us to be. You think about it in Deuteronomy 5 and 33. Deuteronomy 5 and 33. You shall walk in all the ways which the Lord your God hath commanded you, that ye may live, and that it may be well with you, and that you may prolong your days in the land which ye shall possess. Now, Minister, how in the world are you telling me to walk with my without my eyes and walk in faith, and we're going to worry about the world here to come? In order to be able to live in this land as well, in this world right now, we've got to walk by faith right now. We cannot just let the circumstances, what it is that we see with our natural eye, just cause us just to be, become distracted and just throw up our hands. We're just not going to be able to make it. I ain't going to be able to do this. I'm just, oh boy, woe is me. We've got to be able to walk by faith in this world so that we might be able to be blessed by God to be able to see the next world. Amen? Yeah. We've got to be able to walk, amen, in a way that is in the will of God so that we might be able, amen, to, uh, 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 to, to, to please God, amen? And that right there is what our ultimate goal is, is, is to please him. Now, um, Deuteronomy 31, Deuteronomy 31 and 6, Be strong and of a good courage, fear not, nor be afraid of them, for the Lord thy God, he is that doth go with thee. He will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. Now, let's go over to the eighth verse. And the Lord, he is, he it is that doth go before thee. He will be with thee. He will not fail thee, neither forsake thee. Fear not, neither be dismayed. We don't have to worry about our walk here on earth so much. All we've got to do is just trust the Lord. Yeah. We've got to be able to trust the Lord. Yeah. Now, getting back to the lesson here, 
is that we've all we've been talking for the past three four weeks about elijah what it is that the prophet had to take care of and the things that he had to do in order to be able to walk now i'm gonna tell you right now you got to ask yourself Elijah had to have been just a little bit tired. Amen. Elijah had to be just a little bit tired. He done run from Ahab and Jezebel. He has sat down here. He has called fire down from heaven to be able to consume the sacrifice. He has been able to do all of these things. He's been one of the only people that's been standing on the wall for uh, for Christ or for uh, for God at that time. And saints, what we've got to realize is that. Whenever it was his time to go, it was his time to go. He didn't feel bad about it. Yeah. Only thing he needed to make sure of is that he had what? He had him someone to succeed him yeah. who was going to be able to continue his work. Amen? And not his work, but the work of the Lord. And what we've got to realize is, is if you go back into 1 King 19, it tells you that that he had gone up to Elisha while Elisha was plowing in the field. And what did he do? He threw that mantle over him. Amen. Oh, yeah. He threw that cloak over him and told him that said, you're going to have to put down everything if you want to come follow me. I need to go kiss my mother and my father goodbye. No, you need to just come on and let's go and, and let's go serve the Lord. And that right there is what we need to do. We don't have to worry so much about uh, what we need to do before we come serve the Lord. Amen. We need to get this thing right, and we need to get that thing right, and as soon as I stop smoking this, or as soon as I stop drinking that, I'm going to come serve the Lord. No, you need to bring everything to God so that you know that he is one that is going to be able to take that thing away from you, and it's going to go away. Because if you do it yourself, amen, you're not going to be able to keep away from that thing. But if you're able to do that thing with the Lord, with his help, his guidance, through his will, everything's going to be fine. Yeah. Now, it, and it tells us in the lesson on this morning that Elijah tried everything he could to yeah. get Elisha not to come. Go ahead. Three times he told him, he said, just stay here. Don't come follow me. Yeah. But at all uh, at all those turns, Elisha said what? Elisha said, I'm going with you. I'm going to come with you. And at that token, he really knew at that time that it was something that he needed to do. Amen. It yeah. tells us right here, it says... I will not leave thee as the Lord liveth and as thy soul liveth. I will not leave thee. Amen. And that right is the same way that God is with us right now. Amen. Is that he said he would never leave us nor will he forsake us. We need to realize that, saints. We need to realize that whenever everything is going wrong in your life, things ain't going exactly how you want it to go. All you need to realize is that the Lord is not necessarily testing you, but he's allowing things to happen so that he might be able to get the glory out of your life. We've got to realize that his ways, Isaiah 55 and 8, is not like our ways. He is so much above where we are. What we think is going to be right and expedient ain't necessarily what he's going to think. What we've got to do is we've got to get to a place where we're like Elijah and Elisha. And what do they do? They trusted the Lord. They trusted the Lord. Uh, 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 the Lord told, God told uh, Elijah to go down and tell Ahab that, that you're going to die and this is how you're going to die. And then Jezebel sat down there and set out to sit and, and to kill the man of God. But you're going to be able to be okay, amen? And that right there in itself is enough to follow God, amen? And, and uh, it tells us in the, les in the lesson uh, after that that the Lord wants to know if we will continue to follow him. How does God do that? How does God just, 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 you know, test us or try us in order to see if we're going to follow? Just by us living in this life every day. Just by us being in this world every day. The Lord wants to know if we, coming from the lesson, the Lord wants to know if we will continue to follow him. He knows how easily we can be distracted from what really matters. Several times in scripture, the Lord tested people's commitments to see whether they would remain faithful followers. Moses had to lead Israel through the wilderness in search of the promised land. Abraham had to follow God to the top of Mount Moriah when it would have been easier not to go. Simon Peter had to go had to follow Jesus by walking on a stormy sea when many others had ceased following Jesus. He asked the disciples, will you also go away? 
We've got to ask ourselves that on this morning. Will we also go away? Or are we going to continue to try to carry the mantle? Amen? Right. Are we going to continue to carry the cross? Uh, you know, that song came up whenever I opened up my Sunday school lesson this week. Uh, I want to be a follower of Christ. Amen? And telling me what will, show, what will I have to do? What do I have to say? Amen? Yeah. So that I can stay in this Christian way. And, and saint, I'm telling you, it is it behooves every last one of us to try right now to make our call and election sure because of all the uncertainty that we have in this here world right now that you know we, we don't know how things are going to end but we do know the one who does know how it's going to end and it would be great for us to be able to affirm our relationship with him it tells us the second part or the next part of the lesson is that the sons of the prophets brought distraction says Elisha told the distractions to be quiet and he kept on following all the people were sitting out there telling him, are you going to sit down here and be the one are you going to continue to follow Elijah and he's just like you know I'm just going to show you not necessarily by word but by my actions amen and understand saints that of uh, 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 faith and love they have deeds they have actions things that we must do we must show forth what it is that God has put in us we can't just keep uh, uh, saints talking about how, how much we love the Lord. We have to show how much we love the Lord. Amen. That's by our faith in coming, our faith in paying tithes and offering. That's by our doing stuff around the church and for the church. We've got to continue to show forth what it is that God has put in us. Amen. Amen. And if you sit down and you take a look at it, and, and, and uh, again, Elijah tried everything he could to get Elisha not to come to follow him. And um, what we have to do whenever we become distracted is, uh, I don't know about you, but I just, whenever I become distracted at work, whenever I get distracted by the little shiny things that are outside of the periphery instead of just the stuff that I need to be doing, I just have to take a little break for a second. Yeah. I got my little Apple Watch now, and the thing says sometimes it's come up and it says pop up, say breathe. Huh? <laughs> breathe? I'm breathing. No, but it tells you to get right back into focus with what you do two or three times a day so that we can focus on the task. What, and what we have to do is we have to focus on what it is that God has put forth for us. Amen. We can't just sit down here and just make this stuff up as we go along. And how are we going to be able to focus despite our distractions? And that is to follow God. Stay in your word. Meditate on the word. Pray fast. Pay your tithes and offerings. Make sure that you find in yourself in the will of God what it is that he wants to do. Now, I can tell you right now is that if we're going to try not to follow the distractions, the things that are on the outside, it takes a choice. We have to make a choice to do these things. It takes a made-up mind to serve the Lord. That's not something that you're going to just sit down here and do because it takes something uh, 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 in us. That, that, that's going to help us to follow the Lord. And what's that thing in us, Sister Kim? That's that Holy Spirit. I'm going to tell you right now, you're not going to be able to remain remain a, a follower of Christ whenever, whenever you uh, uh, are distracted all the time, but also because you, you don't have a made-up mind. And it tells us whenever we uh, get baptized, it tells us that you first have to have a made-up mind in order to choose this way. Amen. It tells us here in the lesson, it says that it is totally up to us what we will do when distractions come. We can yield to them and lose sight of where God is taking us, or we can refuse to allow them to turn us aside from the journey. These are decisions only we can make. Mom and daddy can't make this decision for you. You're going to have to make this thing up for, in, in your heart and your mind for yourself. For God, I live, and for God, I'll die. Amen. You've got to be... Uh, uh, able to just push out all the noise and just find out where it is that you are in Christ. Amen? Amen. Now we're going to the next part of the lesson because we've got a few more minutes left in the lesson on this morning. And it tells us that Elijah permitted Elisha to make what? A last request. Mm -hmm. Told him he said that the chariot's coming. I'm getting ready to be taken away. I'm going off the scene. What is it that I can do for you? Amen? Amen. And what did Elijah tell him? Or what did Elisha tell him? Elisha told him, he says, I want a double portion of what it is that you've got. Yeah. Amen. 
Can you imagine what you could do with a double portion of anointing uh, uh, from Jesus Christ? Amen. Do you know what it is that you can accomplish if you've got that double portion? Amen. But it wasn't a double portion, meaning that he wanted to, to outdo what it is that his predecessor had done. It's not like that. It's just that he wanted to make sure that he was going to be able to right. remain steadfast in what it is that God wants us to do. Amen. Amen. It tells us in Second Act or in Acts uh, 41, I think, Acts 2 and 41, I think it is. I think it tells us to remain steadfast in the apostle doctrine. Amen. Amen. That's what it tells us we have to do. We got to stay. We've got to stay in this word, saints. We want to be able to make it in this world today. All we've got to do is stay in this word. Stay around people who love the word. Stay around people who love God. Because the world is not a friend of yours. Word tells us that the world is enmity against God's word. We've got to realize that we have a calling that's been placed on our lives whenever we receive this Holy Spirit. And that we've got a duty. We've got a responsibility that we must carry out in order to be able to see God one day. It's not like you just become saved and all of a sudden, oh, I'm saved and I'm just going to be able to sit on the second pew and everything's going to be fine with me. It's work to do once you become oh, yeah, saved. Yeah. And you've got to realize that, that whenever you want to follow, you've got to find yourself a good leader. I praise and thank God every day for my pastor. Whenever I go down on my knees, I thank and I praise him. Uh, 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 you know, God, for, for, for who it is that he's got that's out in front of me. Somebody that I can legitimately say has my best interest at heart, amen, has all the saints' best interests at heart. And I tell you right now, you sit down and you take a look at it, you know, we for, formed a board here at the church so that we can stop him from working so much, amen. And I can tell you right now, uh, 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 Charles I. Paula is work, amen. That's what he is. He is about the work of the Lord. And I praise and I thank God for that. Even though I don't necessarily uh, 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 work as hard as he does around the church, I praise and thank God that he shows me what it is that needs to be done. Amen. And it tells us here in the lesson that uh, let a double portion, uh, I pray thee, let a double portion of thy spirit be upon me. Talk about reaching for the stars of all the things Elisha could have asked for. He asked for what most people would have never even considered. And think about that right now. Think about King Solomon. Whenever God asked him what it is that he needed, he said, I just need wisdom so that I might be able to lead your yeah. people. Amen. You've got to realize that whenever God asks you what it is that you want, and I'm telling you this from, from experience, whenever you ask just for patience, whenever you ask for for, 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 for things of the Lord, the things that you might be able to find yourself in his will, he will give you those things, but along with that, there comes other stuff. Amen. Oh, yeah. I can tell you right now, he's got me in a position on my job. I tell you, I praise and I thank God for my job every day because it's not that I have to have that job making that amount of money, but it's just because of his grace, his mercy, his love towards us. And the number of people that come to me and ask me about the Lord, the young man who even came to me and said, hey, look, me and you need to start having Bible study together. I mean, I tell you, it's just a wonderful, wonderful thing wonderful. that he would be able to put us in a position like that. But it's only because I allow him to try or uh, uh, allow him to have his way in my life that he's allowing me to have some wet things my way in my life here on earth. I mean, Amen. he blesses me, he loves me, and he cares for me. And I can tell you right now, it's only because of him that I have not been consumed. Amen. Amen. God honors the prayers of the people who follow him. It tells us in Matthew 6, 33, what's to say in the lesson? But seek ye first the kingdom of God all right. and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Amen. I mean, saints, I can tell you right now, that is a promise. That's something you can take to the bank. That right there is a check that you can take to the bank that will never, ever, ever, ever bounce. That right there is just like that living water that he puts into us whenever he gives us his spirit. Amen. We've got to realize that God has something for us. He's going to be able to help us. Amen. We can't do this thing by ourselves. We're going to have to see the responsibility of leading ourselves or leading us through this world to God and to his spirit that resides in us. Amen. Elijah kept his eyes on that mantle. As, as Elijah was going up, Elisha kept his eyes on the mantle, even though the, 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 the chariot came down and was between him and Elijah. 
he kept his eyes on that cloak. Amen. You've got to realize that that whenever you keep your eyes on Jesus, something good is going to happen. Amen. Yeah. Something good is going to happen whenever you keep your eyes on Jesus. And then whenever he got that, uh, what's we call it, that mantle, he didn't stop crying out to the Lord right then. No, he didn't. He asked at, at that time, he says, where is the Lord God of Elijah? He knew that that mantle really meant nothing if the Lord was not with him. Amen. So at that juncture, all he wanted to do is he wanted to call out and he wanted to know where was the God of Elijah? Where was that, that person, that man, that being that had so blessed, amen, that had so blessed Elijah with the ability to lead and the ability to remain focused on what it was that needed to happen. He wanted to know where was that God because he needed that God, amen. He needed that God just like all of us need that same God today. We need Jesus. We need him in order for us to be able to live right. We need him for us to be able to, to, to sustain and, and, and to keep or, or to remain steadfast, amen, even in these trying times that we're, that we're going to, uh, through right now. It says here in the lesson that God honors those who faithfully follow him. Mark 16, 17, and 18, Jesus told the people who had gathered around him, and these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Amen. Saints, that's something. That is a sure promise. Amen. Do I sit down here and tell you like somebody uh, said, go drink some Clorox? That's not what I'm telling you. I'm telling you right now, you're not to test God. But I'm telling you, if you do these things by mistake, and if you ask God to, to, to heal you, he's going to be just, just to do just that. Amen. We've got to realize the distractions of this life have been put here from this world by the prince of this world, amen, the prince of this world, so that we might not be or, or, or remain focused on what it is that we have to do for God. Talking about uh, uh, that we get distracted from how good God is. It, it, I mean, did he wake anybody up this morning? That's a blessing, amen. He's got me sitting down here sick in, in, in my body on yesterday, touched and healed me because I needed to stand up in front of the people in order to say and, and, and to bring his word forth, amen, on this morning. It's just a wonderful and beautiful thing that he's able to do all of these things for us. And it tells us in internalizing, uh, I'm sorry, before that, it tells us in no matter the distractions, we must focus on following the Lord. Blessed is the man that endures temptation. For when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. He has made a promise to us, saints. He has made a promise to those who seek him that love him. Amen. And that we've got to be able to, in order to walk in the promise, we've got to be able, amen, to, 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 to remain steadfast, to remain focused, to issue the, uh, the distractions that we have in our lives that are here on this uh, earth. Just as Elisha had to determine that nothing would stop him from following Elijah, we must determine that nothing will stop us from following the Lord. Just like Elisha, we must silence the distractions in our lives in order to keep our eyes and ears on the Lord. We cannot afford to allow the distractions to become our primary focus. And saints, I can tell you right now, it's so easy. It is so easy to to make the small thing the big thing, amen? amen? To make the small thing, the things that we've got going on outside of God, to make those things our biggest focus, amen? Stop worrying about the little stuff. Stop worrying about the little stuff. We've got to worry about the big things. We've got to keep our eyes focused, amen, on Jesus, amen? It tells us plainly in our scripture or in scripture that Peter was able to walk on water. Until he did what? He took his eyes off Jesus. He took his eyes off Jesus. If we want to be able to be with God one day, if we want to be able to see that new Jerusalem, we're going to have to remain focused and take all the distractions and push them to the side and make a, 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 a concerted effort to make heaven our home. We just praise and thank you, dear God, for all that you put into us on this morning. We thank you all for tuning in and those who came to the Sunday school on this morning. 
Mr. Bonnet, you got something to say? I just wanted to say, uh, the gift that Sarah that wanted to go slip, and he lied. Amen. He not to go. I'm that's not right. That's him. right. That's I right. But he told him not to go. That's right. But they begged him so hard, he let him go. That's right. They went and on the mountain in the valley and searched three days. Mm -hmm. He had went to Jericho. Mm -hmm. They came back to Jericho and uh, said, we can't find the people when I tell you not to go. Didn't I tell you not to go? Amen. Uh, and, and even even Elisha, at the beginning of his uh, at the beginning of his uh, walk with the Lord, or at the beginning of his being the prophet, they came down and the four, and the little boys sat there and called him Baldy Baldy Baldy. Amen? Amen. And then they had the bear to come out of the woods and take forty two of them and yes, Amen. Do. I tell you, touch yes, not my prophet and do my uh, or touch not my anointed, do my prophet no harm. Amen. I tell you, we just praise and thank God for everything that's been said on this morning, and. Uh, we're getting ready for the word on this morning. Pass off, sorry. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful. Yeah. Uh -oh. okay. yeah. Yeah. Amen. Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise the Lord. It's so good to see you here this morning at Kingston Road. We thank God for wonderful. A Sunday School by Minister Johnson. Let's give him a hand, if you will. Amen. We thank God for that beautiful lesson. He brought out so many beautiful points, and I can't wait till when he get a, we get a chance to hear all them preach. I want to hear that word. All he has to do is open Sunday School book and go back and teach it, because the Lord has given him a word on today. I just thank God for each of you that have came out, that we might enjoy the Lord together. Uh, we just thank God for how the Lord blessed my wife to see her birthday on yesterday. Amen. And some of the saints, amen, that was with us. Amen. On uh, Friday, we enjoyed her birthday at the park, and we're just glad for all that God is doing in our life. We ask you to join us in this song, and after the song, we'll go down in prayer. We'll have a word of prayer, and we'll come right with the word God has given us for the day. Amen. In the word of God, I have a hiding place. In the word of God, I have a hiding place. In the word of God, I have a hiding place. In the word of God, I have a hiding place. In the word of God, I have a hiding place. In the word of God, I have a hiding place. Throw me overboard, I have a hiding place. Throw me overboard, I have a hiding place. In the word of God, I have a hiding place. In the word of God, I have a hiding place. Amen. Pray with me at this hour. Father God, we thank you for how you bless us to be before your great people one more time. Thank you for the opportunity to share your word. Thank you, Lord, for the audience that you've blessed us with here in the sanctuary and also the audience on Facebook. Now, Lord, give us a word that would encourage the hearts of the people in the time that we're living in. We need a word on today. We thank you for the Sunday school and we thank you for this moment. Now, bless us as we go further into your word that we may do your will. Christ's name we pray. Let all of God's people say amen. 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 We thank the Lord again for what God is doing. We thank God for our scriptural text. We ask you to get ready to turn to it from the book of Joshua. The first through the uh, eighth verse, the first chapter, one through eight. And we uh, thank God for the three-part series that God has given us, talking about God's plan for God's people. God have a plan for his people. And I want you to know, even in the day that we're living in, let's not get caught up, as our Sunday school teacher said, about things that are going on. God still got a plan for us. Amen. And we follow that plan, we can make it safely into heaven. Because it's God, it's uh, the enemy's desire to get us distracted Amen. into everything that's going on into the world. Uh, music can distract you. People can distract you. Finances can distract you. The government can distract us. But I hear the word of the song in the word of God, I have a hiding place. In this three-part series, God gave us God's plan for God's people. Uh, part one came talking about higher ground. Part two 
we talked about working together. And today the Lord blessed us with a topic of moving into the promised land. Moving into the promised land. Uh, if you will, the first verse of uh, the first chapter of Joshua, and it reads thusly. Now after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spake unto Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' minister, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now therefore arise, go over this Jordan, thou and all this people, unto the land which I do give them, even to the children of Israel. Every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon, that have I given unto you, as I said unto Moses. For the, from the wilderness and this Lebanon, even unto the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites, and unto the great sea toward the going down of the sun shall be your coast. There shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. As I was with Moses, so will I be with thee. I will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. Be strong and of good courage, for unto this people should thou divide for an inheritance the land, which I swear unto the fathers to give them. Only be thou strong and very courageous, that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded thee. Turn not from it to the right hand or to the left, that thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. The word of God for the people of God, help me say thanks be to God. Amen. 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 Moving into the promised land. In part one of the three-part series, I wanted to express the need to go higher. So I talked about higher ground. Mm -hmm. And that was for the church, us as a community, us as a nation, us as families, and even us individually. Uh, all of us want more success. All of us need more success. Amen. Some in one place and some in another. Yeah. Sometimes it's financially. Yeah. Sometimes it's socially. Sometimes yeah. we just need to learn how to get along better with one yeah. another. Yeah. Sometimes it's economically, uh, physically, and definitely spiritually. We ask God for higher ground. Point two on last Sunday, I talked about how we should continue to work together. I gave an example from Genesis, the 11th chapter, how when people got together and wasn't even following God like they should, they decided they wanted to build a tower to Babel, a tower called Babel, up to heaven. And God said he had to stop what he was doing to come down to see what they was doing because if men get together, they can do anything. So God let us know men can do anything if they get together, but he had to stop their plan because they was trying to get to heaven. He confused the language. But I came with the last latter part of people getting together from Acts, the second chapter, and how when the church started, they had everything come and how God blessed the church. If you want God to bless your church, if you want God to bless your assembly, if you want God to bless your family, all you got to do is get together and say, we're going to accomplish the same goal. It's hard to move forward when people are not together. Oh, I wish I had a witness. Amen. Even in your home or in the church, I thank God for Minister Johnson bringing up the point about the board as he taught Sunday school. But if the board not together, it can't work. But somebody want to fix the door, somebody else want to fix the underpinning, somebody else want to paint the church. But if we get together, we can accomplish some goals. Amen. And in the home, sometimes the husband want to do one thing and the wife want to do the other. Oh, I wish I had some real Holy Ghost witness. Don't mind telling the truth. Amen. The wife might want to buy a car. Amen. The husband might want to uh, add on something to the house. So it all depends 
amen, on getting together. I want you to know you can do both things. You can do everything if you get together. So as we come to part three on today, moving into the promised land. Uh, God's plan for God's people. God got a plan for us. I want to encourage the young people, if you want to be successful, you need a plan. What are you going to do after you get out of high school? What are you going to do after you get out of elementary school? I'm so excited when I see young children coming up with things that they've invented that have made the whole world pause and recognize a child thought of this. Yeah. Amen. If you have the heart and innocence of a child, you can do anything. Sometimes we as adults, we fail because we have lost that innocence. We have lost that mind like of a child and say God is able. Because, you know, we, it takes big faith to serve God. Amen. You can't have little faith. you got to have big faith. Yeah. And God has given all of us a measure of faith. But we, can, we need to know God is able to do anything. God can give me what I want, but i got to put my trust in God. i got to put my faith in God. And so it was with the children of Israel. I want you to know God blessed them and took them out of Egypt and began to lead them into the promised land. Amen. And I, I, I got amazed and just excited when I read the story and find all the things God did for them. But I want you to know this and put this in your uh, 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 pocket that you might have it later on. God is just trying to bring you back where you're supposed to be. Oh, I wish I had a way. God is just trying to bring you back where you're supposed to be. We're supposed to be walking with God. We're supposed to be blessed. Amen. The children of Israel was already in Goshen, and they left and went to Egypt because there was poverty in the land. Joseph was down there, and he wanted to preserve his father. He wanted to preserve his brother. He said, y'all leave Goshen, leave the promised land, leave Canaan, and come down to Egypt that you may have food to eat. But while they was down there, they got in a trap, if you will. But God meant for them to be there that they might learn a lesson. Sometimes God put us in a place that we might learn a lesson. And when we learn that lesson, we can go on a little further. But I wanted you to understand they were once in Goshen. Amen. As the children of Israel. As Jacob was in Goshen. And then they went to Egypt. Then they went back. So as we look at our lesson on today from the scripture text we read, God promised Joshua that he was going to be with him like he was with Moses. I want you to know God always, amen, is going to make his man shine. And all you got to do is wait on the Lord. Be of good courage, and he will strengthen thine heart. The Lord gave me, amen, a mindset to think about Isaiah. Amen. I hear the word say, when King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord. Amen. I want to ask you a question. Who is stopping you from seeing God? Who is in your way? It may not be a person that you, amen, everybody else know that you look up to, but sometimes we looking up to people, amen, that's not uh, in God's plan. But God's got somebody, amen, for us to follow. And so it was with Moses. As long as they followed Moses, it was all right. But one day Moses died. Don't get so lofty and caught up in yourself. You're going to die one day. Amen. Ella Pollock, you're going to die one day. Yeah. Amen. This is why I try to help set things in order because I know one day I'm going to leave here. And I don't have the time set when I'm going to leave. God got the time yeah. set. Yeah. Amen. That's why we got to keep getting our business in order. Yeah. Amen. Every now and then, won't you start moving something to let people know I'm getting it in order? Amen. Clean up something. I'm getting things in order. Build something. I'm getting things in order. For one day I got to leave out of here. And so it was with Moses. And Moses left out. And then God told Joshua, I'm going to be with you like I was with Moses. He said, but be thou strong and very courageous. I want you to know that I'm with you every step of the way. And then I want you to know as God blessed Joshua to lead the children of Israel, one of his first tests was when he went up against Jericho. On, and the Bible said Jericho walls was so wide, yeah. amen, the children of Israel just could not penetrate them. They could not get through them. The walls of the city were so wide that chariots and horses could ride around the city yeah. on top of the wall yeah. because they had a fortress there. I want you to know, amen, there's nothing too hard for God to bring yeah. down. Amen, if I'm too high, Lord, bring me down. Somebody yeah. need to pray that prayer because we get lifted up and think that we got all power in our hand because we got a little bank account. 
Hey Amen. We got a little bank. Anybody want to be a witness with me? Some weeks you have a little bank. Yeah. Amen. About a month or two later, you don't have no bank. Yeah. Amen. But God said, I'm still with you. God said, I can penetrate everyone. So he told uh, Joshua, this is what I want you to do. Tell the children of Israel for six days to walk around the wall. Just walk around. Don't say anything. You know, it's hard to get some people not to say anything. Amen. Yeah. But God said, be quiet a little yeah. while. He said, be quiet for six days and just walk around the wall. Amen. Anybody feel like walking for God? Anybody feel like taking a walk for God? He said, I'm going to hold my peace and let the Lord fight my battle. Because victory shall be mine. He said, but on the seventh day, he said, I want you to tell the amen, seven priests to get ready to walk. I want them to blow the trumpet. He said, oh, and I want them to walk around the wall seven times. He said, after the seventh trip, I want all the Israel to shout with a mighty shout. God want to praise. Is anybody ready to praise the Lord? Anybody ready to tell God, thank you? Anybody want to give God a shout? God said, if you shout, I'll bring the walls down. I'll bring the walls down. God want us to shout. Yeah. Amen. And the enemy might be able to hear us. Yeah. You know, we'll, we'll shout louder at a baseball game than we will at church. Yeah. We'll shout louder shooting firecrackers than we will at church. Yeah. Amen. But God want to shout for the things that he's doing. God done something in your life. Why don't you say, thank you, Jesus? Thank you. If God has opened a door, why don't you say, thank you, Jesus? Thank you. If God has delivered you, why don't you say, thank you, Jesus? Thank you. If God has brought you out of something you didn't think you was going to come out of, why don't you say, thank you, Jesus? Thank you. Somebody need to thank the Lord. Somebody need to tell the Lord, Lord, I thank you. Amen. God's plan is for us to be successful. God wants us to be successful. And from our Sunday school lesson, have some of the same topic. Amen. Point two, don't let distractions stop you. Don't let distractions stop you. After being so successful, sometimes we get caught up in our success and think that we're all that and a bag of chips. Amen. So it was with Israel. They thought that they had done so good. They went and tore down big old Jericho. Yes. All them walls, look what God done for us. Oh, I wish I had a witness. Sometimes we think about some of the things we have accomplished. Look how far God has brought me. I got a bachelor's degree. I got an associate degree. I got a master's degree. I got a doctor's degree. I want you to know that means nothing to God. Amen. If you don't serve him, God wants you to serve him and follow him. And so Israel got lifted up in themselves. And they said, we've taken big old Jericho down. Look at us. Amen. But they say, look at that little camp now. God said, I want you to go take out Ai. Amen. That's how you spell it. A and I. He said, go take out Ai. And they went to fight Ai. And when they got there, little old Ai, they could not defeat him. And Ai defeated Israel. Israel had to go running back in the woods because Ai defeated Israel. Amen. And then Israel began to wonder. Joshua began to wonder, why is it that I'm not successful now and I was successful before? I wish somebody asked himself that question. Why is it, amen, God's praying for God's people. Why is it that I'm successful before and then I got this little problem, I can't be successful now. God said there's sin in the camp. There's something wrong. Sometimes we have to find what's wrong inside of us. Stop looking for wrong in everybody else and say, Lord, what's the wrong with me? It's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. It's not my brother. It's not my sister. But it's me standing in the need of prayer. And the Lord told Joshua, I want you to search the camp. He said, Israel have sinned. He didn't say one person. He said, Israel have sinned. And they found Achan had sinned. There was sin in the camp. What was the sin in the camp? When they defeated Jericho, he went and got one of the most beautiful garments. He got some gold and he got some silver and he began to hide and thought that nobody knew. I hear the old song coming in my mind. Amen. It said, you can't hide. Hallelujah. You can't hide. God got your number and he knows where you live and death got a warrant for you. Some of them old gospel songs come to my mind. Amen. It said, you can't hide. God got your number. Knows where you live. And God ain't trying to kill you. He just wants you to confess it. 
He wants you to forsake it. He wants you to throw it back and say, I don't want that no more. Yeah. Amen. But Achan didn't throw it back. He held his peace. Amen. And didn't want nobody to know what he had done. And the Bible said, amen, God allowed Achan and his whole family to be burned up. And why? Because they had sinned. And had to get sin out the camp. And God want us to know distractions can stop you. Distractions can hinder you. Distractions can hold you back. But don't let nothing hold you back from getting what God wants you to have. Amen. We as African Americans, many times we've let distractions stop us because the people don't like us. Oh, I know it's some black people don't like you too. Amen. Don't just fault the white man. It's some black people don't like you too. Amen. But I want you to know those distractions will hinder you. Some people are trying to stop you from being successful. Some people are jealous of you. Amen. Don't 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 get upset because I say that. Amen. Some people don't like you because they just don't like you. They don't like where you live. They don't like the car you drive. They don't like that you got more than three pairs of shoes. They got some things they just don't like about you. But that's not going to stop me from serving God. Because God's been good to me. And I'm going to let the world know that Jesus lives. And he lives down in my sanctified soul. Hold on to God's unchanging plan. Don't let distraction stop you. Amen. Point three on today. Keep abiding. Under God's shadow. Keep abiding under God's shadow. If you abide under the shadow of God, God will protect you. God will keep you. Psalms 91 and 1 says, Abide under the shadow of the Most High. Amen. He that abideth under the shadow, God is looking over you. Amen. A shadow covers you from the heat. Oh, I wish I had a witness. Anybody in this 100-degree weather, 99-degree weather, 95-degree weather ever look for some shadow that you might get into a comfortable place? Amen. When you get under God protection, you are in a comfortable place. Don't worry about the heat. God said you're under my shadow now. Amen. Let go. But we got to learn how to let it go. We got to learn how to give it to God. We got to learn how to do what his words say. Amen. John 14 and 1. Let not your heart be troubled. Thank you, Lord. Amen. We got to say, Lord, I'm a let. Amen. Sometimes we want God to do it, but God said, you do it. You let. Let not your heart be troubled. I'm not going to let this bother me. Oh, can I get a witness? God's plan for God's people. We are allowing too much to get on our heart, and we can't serve God. We can't shop like we used to. We can't praise him like we used to. We can't have a smile on our face like we used to, because we are letting the things of this world hold us down. We let life beat us up. Amen. But I hear the word of God come to us and let not your heart be troubled. Oh, I wish I had a witness. Yeah. Amen. Why don't you throw it on the altar today? Just give it to the Lord. Yeah. Just say, Lord, it's yours now. Yeah. Amen. You told me to let not, and I'm not going to keep it anymore. Yeah. I'm going to empty myself. Yeah. I'm going to empty myself yeah. of all that worry, all that fear, all that thing that just holding me back. Amen. Move forward on today. Amen. God wants us to abide under his shadow. Amen. Amen. Psalms 37 and 5 say, Commit thy ways unto the Lord, and he shall bring it to pass. Yeah. Sometimes we want God to do things that we hadn't committed to God. We commit to a whole lot of other things. Right. Oh, I wish I had a witness. We commit to a boyfriend. We commit to a girlfriend. And don't be like a uh, Ananias and Sapphira, they committed to one another to lie against the Holy Ghost. Oh, I wish somebody would go to the book of Acts, and you will find Ananias and Sapphira. Amen. They begin to say, we won't tell the prophet what we really sold the land for, because we need to hold some of this back for ourselves. Amen. So when they went to the prophet, when they went to Peter, Peter said, oh, I heard you sold your land. Yes, we sold it. How much you sold it for? They told him this and that. And he asked him, why do you lie against the Holy Ghost? Amen. And then uh, Ananias fell dead, and they drug him out. Amen. The wife came in, and she began to say, 
Oh, it's so good to see you, Pastor. Anybody ever uh, greeted the pastor like that? Yeah. Amen. Or greeted the minister like that? Or greeted the missionary like that? And you knew you had something in your hip pocket that you was holding back? And I ain't talking about finances either. I'm talking about something that you know that you have against somebody. Yeah. All kind of things people hold back. Amen. But God knows the real thing. And so she came in, so fire came in, and she began to say, uh, yes, we sold it for so-and-so. He, he said, why? Peter said, why have you and your husband got together to lie against the Holy Ghost? And she fell there, they drug her out also. Amen. God want us to know if we commit our ways unto him, he'll bring it to pass. That's right. And it may not come to pass when you want it to come to pass, but it will come to pass. Amen. It will come to pass. Right. It will happen. Amen. And when it happens, sometimes you're not going to be aware it happened. Amen. You're going to be on down the road or another problem is going to be in your life. And you're going to look back over and say, how I got over? How I got over? My soul looked back and wonder how I made it over. Amen. You got a vehicle, you got a house, you wondered how you was going to pay for it. And God allowed you to keep paying on it and making things happen. And then you begin to wonder, I ain't worried about that no more. God gave you something else to worry about. God will keep his promises. Amen. If we commit our ways to him. And in the eighth verse of this Joshua, the first chapter, listen what it says. He says, this book of the law should, thou, should not depart out of thy mouth. We should, I want you to know as I pause, we should keep the word of God before us. The word of God ought to be by your bedside. Amen. I'm trying to talk about God's plan for God's people. And if you don't have the Bible by your bedside, you ought to have your Sunday school book. If you don't have your Sunday school book, you ought to have the daily bread. You ought to have some kind of reading that will give you scripture and even some expository reading that you might be able to encourage yourself. Sometimes the preacher can't get there fast enough. Right. You better learn how to extend your arm and pat yourself on the back. David had to encourage himself. Amen. When everything was going against him, when all of his children, amen, his wife had left, amen, and everybody else's wife had left, everybody else's children had left, and they wanted to kill David. And David said, Lord, what should I do? The Bible said David had to encourage himself. Amen. Don't look for nobody else to encourage you all the time. Pull yourself up by your own bootstrap and say, for God I live and for God I die. I got to make this journey. Amen. Moving on. But thou shalt meditate therein day and night. Amen. Came out in Sunday school. Minister Johnson said, meditate on the Lord. Meditate therein on the word day and night. And thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. Observe to do it. You might not do it all. I, mean, I might all. not do it all. That's right. But let that be your goal. Yeah. Let that be your purpose. Right. And if we mess up, brush yourself off, get up and try it again. God is looking for faithfulness. He's not looking for perfection. He's looking for somebody to be faithful. Amen. Do what you're already doing. Keep on coming to the house of the Lord. Keep on paying your tithes and all. Keep on being honest with your brother and sister. And the Bible goes on to say, Amen. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous. God's plan for God's people. You do these things, he said, you'll make your way prosperous. And then thou shalt have good success. Good success. Anybody can help me say good success? Good success. Good success. Sometimes we have based our success on the wrong things. We are basing our success on financial gain. We are basing our Success on material wealth. But I want you to know good success. Thank if you, you ask somebody with COVID-19 on the day, they say, I just want to breathe again. Thank you. Oh, can I just breathe, Lord? Yeah. Lord, help me to breathe again. Take your knee off my neck, God. Oh, devil, and let me breathe again. But God has a plan for God's people. If we can hold fast, God will give us good success. Amen. As I close on today, point four, God made us some promises. Amen. God made us some promises. Amen. As we get ready to move into the promised land. Amen. I want to ask you on today, what is your promised land? I know for Israel, it was moving into Canaan. But God made you some promises. There's some things you want God to do for you. Amen. I want you to know having a peace of mind, that's something that God promised that he would do. He would give you peace, amen, in the midst of confusion. He, would he said, I'll make you the head and not the tail. I'll make you the lender and not the borrower. 
Amen. God made you some promises. And on today, all he asks us to do, amen, walk in him and he can bring them to pass. Amen. First Chronicles 7, 14, if my people, which are called by my name, would humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked way, he said, then what I hear from heaven. He said, I will heal their land. On today, America needs healing. There's a healing needed in the land. But instead of people running to God, they're trying to make themselves great. Amen. When we are trying to, amen, do God's plan for God's people, stop worrying about yourself being number one. And let God be number one. Not only number one in your life, but number one on your job. Amen. You got a raise, God did. Amen. You got a new position, God did. Amen. Give God the praise. God wants the praise. Amen. I hear the word as we started. If I'm too high, Lord, please bring me down. I don't want to be lifted up in myself because when God gets ready to cut you down, amen, nobody else can help you. But when God lifts you up, can't nobody else curse you. Amen. That's the kind of God we serve. God can lift us up and man just have to pause and recognize. I hear the word of God coming to me. Amen. He said the king's amen, heart is in the hand of God. Amen. Don't want to give you a raise, but they got to give you a raise. Don't want to give you that house, but they got to give you that house. Don't want to bless you, but they got to bless you. God wants us to know he's got a plan for his people. Amen. And God want to take us through. God want to take us higher. And God want us to see, see us saved on today. On today, as I get ready to close, if there's anyone that's not saved, amen, God's got a plan for you. God has made you some promises. Amen. As we move into the promised land of God, God's plan for God's people. Amen. Get ready to pick up your tent and move. Amen. Don't get everything so stationary. Amen. God did not Amen. Have a place for his uh, dwelling to be with Israel until they got back. Amen. To the promised land. He, or until while they was in uh, Egypt, he said, don't build me no church. Yet. I don't need no church. Amen. They was in the wilderness. Don't build me no church. Amen. He said, get a tent and you might get a, to move any time I say move. Amen. I hear the word of God saying, wear this world as a loose garment. Don't get so caught up into everything. Everything got to be perfect as far as your success. Think about God's success. God want to take you somewhere, but you got to be ready to move. God want to take you somewhere, but you got to be ready to move. When we lock ourselves in to this world system, when we lock ourselves in, you don't have room to move, and God don't have room to bless you. Amen. I'm going to close with this note. I think every child of God ought to get to a place, especially men folk, because you're supposed to be the head. But this for women folk too. Get you in a place that you don't just have an hourly wage. Amen. Get you to a place that you can be blessed and let God bless you how you want to bless you. Amen. Now I know God can send something in the mail, but I'm talking about get you, start something that God want to, when he want to pour you a blessing and you taking orders for, for shirts or when you taking orders for tires. Amen. And God said, I'm just going to send you a big blessing. You taking orders for yards, God say, now, you handle this. And that's how God want to bless his people. God want to pull you out of blessing that you don't have room to receive. Stop locking yourself in. Amen. Get more orders that you can feel. Amen. And say, watch God fill the order. God, I need help. Lord, send help in the house. That's the kind of God we serve on today. God's got a plan for his people. But he is asking us to commit our ways unto him. He said, and I'll bring it to pass. What do you want God to do? Amen. If you are not saved, you need to learn how to get in touch with God. You need to be baptized in his name. If you've never been baptized, you need to say, Lord, I want to be part of your family. That's what baptism is. It's joining the family of God and saying, Lord, I'm tired of living this life that I've been living. Tired of just running here and there. I want to get settled in God. I want a sweet life. I don't want arguments every time my family come together for the 4th of July. There ought to be some peace when the saints of God get together. If there's no peace there, something's wrong. Somebody's missing. Amen. The Holy Ghost is missing. Because the Holy Ghost is a peaceful, amen, image. The Holy Ghost is a peaceful person. And, that, and he'll bring peace, great peace. Have they that love thy law 
and nothing shall offend them. When people get offended all the time, there's something wrong there. Something offending them. And it ain't God. It's something in that spirit. You know, man has a hard time of being second place. Oh, I wish I had a witness. Amen. If you don't make me first place, I don't want nothing to do with you. Oh, that's the spirit of the devil. Amen. When we have the spirit of God, we'll let God arise. And all our enemies be scattered. Yeah. Lord, you take control as I get ready to close. Amen. If you haven't been born again, you need to be baptized. And after you get baptized, you need the gift of the Holy Ghost. I'm talking about tongue speaking Holy Ghost. I'm talking about having it that you will know that you have. That you might walk with God. You might talk with God. You might live for God. And that we might be ready to go to the big promised land. Yeah. Amen. I hear somebody saying, this world is not my home. I'm just a pilgrim and a stranger passing through. I have no continuous city here, but I seek one to come. Anybody seeking to get out of here, amen, don't build so much on this life. Look to the life to come. Say, so God, get ready to get out of here. We don't know what's going to take us out. We're looking forward to coming back to church on next Sunday. I'm asking you to protect yourself. Amen. Come with your masks. Amen. Take your temperature before you walk in. Come in to have a high time in the Lord. Amen. Greet everybody you want to greet on the outside that we might keep ourselves safe. But I want you to know that however we have to leave here, God already know about it. He already know about it, but he wants us to be safe as well. Can I get a witness? He don't want us to be foolish. But while we are here, amen, let us give God the highest praise. God is our protector and our keeper. He's a very present help in the time of trouble. We ask you to join us again next Sunday for 9.30 for Sunday school. Is that all right, Minister Johnson? 9.30 Sunday school. We'll have our morning worship, amen, on next Sunday. And we will also have communion. Saints of God are coming back together. We're going to have communion. And we're going to have it set up so, amen, that you take your communion. You don't have to shake nobody's hand. The minister's going to be on the side. They're not going to be behind the table, so you don't have to get too close to it. Yeah. All you got to do is pick it up, take your bread, yeah. take your communion, go back to your seat. Amen? Yeah. Amen. Throw your cup away on the way to your seat so nobody has to touch it either. Amen? Because yeah. we want to do things decent and in order. But we want to honor our Lord and Savior when we come back to church next Sunday yeah. because he's kept us this far. Right. We haven't been in church as much. Amen. But we want to tell the Lord, thank you. Thank you for keeping up. Amen. Thank you for making a way. All of us know somebody that has been affected by this virus, whether they died or not. But I'm so glad that God is a keeper of his people. Ask you to come back on, tom on tomorrow night for prayer. Those that will join us. Women of God for prayer at 6 o'clock. Amen. We ask you to come out on Wednesday at 6.30 for prayer. If you can, but join us for Bible class. Amen. We'll be coming from the ninth chapter of the book of Romans in Jesus' name. And then we look forward to our state meeting on next week. Amen. On uh, Friday night at, at 6 o'clock, the missionary department will be in charge. Uh, we ask you to tune in for that service for the South Carolina Upstate. It'll be on Zoom. The information will be on Facebook. Also on that Saturday night, the Young People Department will be in charge. Also the Sunday School Department. We ask you to tune in at 6 o'clock. Amen. For that service, Young People, Sister Kira, I know you'll be watching. Amen. And then on uh, Sunday night at 6 o'clock, we'll be here in Kingston Road. Amen. We ask you, if you can, Minister Wright, be with us. Amen. At 6 o'clock. Uh, Minister Johnson, if you can, be with us. Minister Bolt Knight, if you can, be with us. At 6 o'clock, we're going to be spacious, and we're going to have a good time in the Lord. Uh, on Sunday night, next Sunday night at 6 o'clock, we're not going to stay long. Every service that you tune into, only should last one hour and a half at the most. Amen. Noonday prayer. Amen. We thank God for Trustee Green. I want to make this announcement over Facebook. Amen. We have noonday prayer at 12 o'clock. And if you want to if you want to uh, come to a uh, green catering, come to Noonday Prayer. Amen. We have Subway. We have uh, we have pizza sometimes. We have uh, hamburgers, hot dogs. We have uh, corn dogs. Corn dogs. We have uh, Chinese food. Amen. So we ask you if you want to come out to Noonday Prayer and ask God to feed you after the prayer. 
Amen. Amen. Come out and join us, and we look forward to seeing you then. At this time, we're going to close, amen, with this song. Continue to pray our strength in the Lord that we may go high and do the will of the Lord. This is our desire in Jesus' name. In the word of God, I've got a hiding place. In the word of God, I've got a hiding place. In the word of God, I've got a hiding place. In the word of God, I've got a hiding place. Throw me overboard, I've got a hiding place. Throw me overboard. In the word of God, I have a hiding place. In the word of God, I have a hiding place. Amen. Give the Lord a hand.